Hi everyone, today I'm talking to you about Filmic Remote, the add-on to Filmic Pro that allows you to film yourself and right now I'm using it for YouTube videos like this so you can see that it's a really helpful tool to have. I've started a Buy Me A Coffee page which is essentially like a Patreon where you can donate as little as three dollars to my YouTube channel to help me keep improving and making helpful videos for you guys at home. So the link for that is in the description below, I'll be grateful if you're able to help out there. If you're always saying thank you, it's by watching these videos, then thank you. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Let's take a look at three different ways we can connect our two devices for Filmic Remote. The first way is through an established Wi-Fi connection. So if you're at home or on location and there's a Wi-Fi source you can use for both devices, you turn on Wi-Fi for both. And then once you've done that, it will give you the home Wi-Fi for that location or your home. Now, once they're connected to both that same one, you're good to go. Peer-to-peer -peer connection. Now with peer-to-peer, -peer, you're doing a similar thing. You go to the Wi-Fi, you turn Wi-Fi on. The difference here is with peer-to-peer, -peer, you press I for information, which is in the blue circle listed here. And once you press that, you'll get the option to forget this network for both devices. So you press forget this network. It will ask you if you want to do it. You say yes. And then your devices should come listed below Wi-Fi now, and you can press on those to connect them. Now for me, I've never ever seen my devices listed below, but when I then go to connect for Filmit Remote, it still works. So if you don't see your device names, have a go at connecting still, and it should still work. And with the Wi-Fi connection like this, you can use it outdoors, and it should work at up to 15 feet distance between devices. The last option is the Ethernet connection. This is the more expensive option, but it will give you a completely live feedback without any delay. So you'll need at least two free Ethernet ports, You'll need two ethernet cables and to go with those as well so it does rack up a little bit expensive you'll have an apple as filament pro specify an apple usb 3.0 to lightning adapter a usb to ethernet cable adapter and whilst you're spending a little bit more this will give you a completely live feedback as opposed to the one second delay you're likely to get with the wi-fi connection so let's say you've chosen one of the wi-fi options which is personally what i always do now to open up the connection from your primary device to the secondary device, the second phone or iPad, whatever you're using. You go to settings on the bottom right here, that cog, tap settings. You've got device, so we're gonna press on device. Then you've got remote control, so we're gonna turn that on and that now opens up this phone to be able to connect to your secondary device. You've also got remote preview only. Remote preview only, what that does if you tick that and you come out of here, you can still control everything from your main device but remote preview only means that your second device will only be a preview of what you see on screen. So it'll just be a monitor. So that might be an option you want to use. Although for me, it kind of defeats the point of having Filmit Remote, but that may be helpful for some. So for the purpose of this tutorial, we're now gonna press on device. We're gonna press remote preview only and turn that off. Come back to the main screen and we're now gonna connect with our second device. Okay, so once you've opened up the Wi-Fi connections between the two devices, on the second device, you'll have connect and whatever you've labeled your first and primary device. So I just call it iPhone. So then you tap on the plus, which will add that phone to your connection. And now you have Filmic Remote completely connected to your second device. So you'll have everything you need here. And you'll see on the screen on this one, it says under the control of Filmic Remote, long press to disconnect. So essentially, if you want to disconnect from the primary device, you just tap, hold, and it completely disconnects and you're back to this and then you can just connect again. And you've got all the controls again. The only thing you don't have on Filmic Remote on your secondary device is the play button that's usually here. So to get to that, you've got the link here, the little chain. If you press that, that disconnects again, and you can then see the play button, which is just here. So you can press that, and you can kind of scroll through your files and your shots and look through that, that way. And you can come out of that and then reconnect to start using your secondary device for Filmic Remote again. Now, as I said, you've got all the controls here apart from the play button to see your shots and files. So you press the bottom left part here and you've got your shutter speed and you'll see that first image change as we change that and bring it down. So I bring that down to 48 frames per second as if we're shooting a film right down you got the focus you'll see on this device it will change as we change this one so bring that focus nice and close you've also got the analytics so if you feel that the focus is a little bit off or you're not quite 100 percent comfortable with the focus you can go to focus peaking and you can see exactly with the wheels 
what is in focus, what's not in focus. Now there is a slight delay between your movement on the second device and it's showing up. So you may have to just adjust for that slightly. It's not going to move at exactly the same time as your primary device with it. Now there are three different modes to film it remote. So if I bring this closer so you can see, if you press this arrow right here, that'll bring up three different modes. So you've got control mode, which is what we're in now. So the record button here, which you've got down on the bottom right here, that gives you all the controls, as I said, without the play button. The second mode is monitor mode. This is where it gets quite complex. So you've got the live feed in the top left here of what you're seeing. So if I go like that, you'll see that's the delay you can see there of the movement on screen. But you've got the live feed on the top left. You've got your vector scope on the top right here. You've got your waveform here as well. You've got your RGB composite. So you've got all the colors here that are showing up and how much they're showing up. And you've got a zone as well. So you've got all the different sections between black all the way up to white. This one shows you luminance. So that's the intensity of color as your eye sees it. So if you've got a darker area, the intensity as you can see to the right hand side is not as intense. And I definitely didn't have to research what this means. And on the last part here, you've got your RGB channel. So your red, your greens, and your blues. And it's quite complex stuff. So I don't tend to use this really, but if you want to use it, it's there. It's nice options to have. It's pretty advanced as well for a phone. So that's pretty cool. And if you press the I here, that brings you into director mode. Now you can press this arrow and that gets rid of the menu. And you've just got a nice clear screen to watch your scene. So if you don't want any distractions, you don't want to have any of the controls on your screen so you can just see everything that you're getting here, then this is a really good way to go to just use it as a monitor. So you can press record, watch your take, and at the end of it, press stop and see what you've got. It's a really good way to make sure you've got no distractions on the screen at all. And then you just press the arrow and that brings you back the options for modes again. Just to confirm as well, with the Filmic Remote, when you're on the screen using the secondary device, you can still access the white balance. So you've got all of the presets and things like that, your temp, your tint, that's all there as well. And if you've got a cinematographer kit, which I have, you've got all of those options to move around with as well and adjust for your shots. Another thing to note as well is you can actually adjust your audio levels on the primary device as well. So you can slide that down and then bring that back up in between those two zeros, which is the sweet spot for audio. So audio you can still adjust. It costs about 10 pounds, but if you've already got Filmic Pro, I bought it for five pounds because for some reason you can still get it in the bundle even though you have bought them separately. So if you want to buy Filmic Pro and you haven't already, it's well worth looking into your app store and checking the apps to see if you can still get it for five pounds. It's worth 10 pounds, don't get me wrong. But obviously if there's a deal still to be had, you may as well get it. Now, something else I want to talk about is automatic focus pulls with Filmic Remote. Now, one of the best things about this is you can actually do a manual focus pull. If you try an automatic focus pull, if you don't know how to do that, I'll put a link in the description below and in the screen now. If you set your focus points, I mean, you can normally do an automatic focus pull by tapping this. But as you can see, it kind of stutters its way through at points. So the best way to do it is to set your points as if you're going to do an automatic focus pull and then just do the focus pull yourself and bring that in line with your primary device. So do a manual focus pull rather than an automatic focus pull. Because with an automatic focus pull, you get a slight jitters, so it kind of stops and starts a little bit when you play the back of the take. But here, as you can see, you get a nice smooth focus pull that works really, really well. And that's one of the best things about Filmic Remote as well, is you can start to use techniques uh, from angles that are really tricky. And what's great about using manual focus pulls as well, it means that you don't have to touch your primary device, because sometimes if I touch my primary device, it's really hard to like tap it without actually kind of like knocking the screen slightly. So actually being able to do a manual focus pull on the secondary device is really, really helpful. There's a few important things to know about this. The first thing being that you can't cross an Android with an iOS device. So if you have an Android phone, you can't cross and use a iPad or an iOS phone to use Filmic Remote, you have to have an Android and an Android or iOS and iOS. If you cross an Android with an iOS, it won't work. As I mentioned before, when you're using the Wi-Fi connections, either of the two Wi-Fi versions, you will get a second delay to your monitor. So if you're using YouTube like I am now, that's fine. I'm using this right here and it works fine for me. I'm able to do it and it's not a bother having a second delay. But if you're using this in film, for example, you'll have to get used to the fact that there's a second delay if you're using this outside using the Wi-Fi connection between the two devices. There is a slight issue every so often it does cut out for a moment but don't worry if it cuts out you're still having your take recorded it does not stop your take. I had a bit of a panic once where I thought I'd lost my footage but that wasn't the case 
So if it blanks out and you get like a black screen or something whilst you're filming, don't worry, that take that you're filming is still being recorded. And then when you come back into it, or if you go to your primary device, when you finished your take, press stop and that take will be there for you. Another thing to think about as well is that you cannot monitor more than one device at the same time. So if you have your primary device like this, and you've got a device that you're recording on as your second device, you can't have a third or fourth device for your monitor, only one monitor device as your secondary device. And as I mentioned before, if your Wi-Fi names for your phones don't come up or your iPad, don't worry, it should still connect. For some reason, it just doesn't come up for me, but it still connects just fine. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this tutorial interesting and helpful. If you did, hit the subscribe button, like button, all that kind of stuff, you know what to do. And if you haven't already, check out my Filmic Pro playlist. They're really, really helpful as well. So thank you for me. Thank you from him. See you later. See you on the next one. Bye bye.